Hey, this is Mark Goldberg from Mark Vlogs Watches, and today we're going to talk about a really sensitive topic, and that is Rolex. Should you buy with or without box and papers, and what are the ramifications of that? Now, Archie Luxury has made videos for years saying that box and papers are nice to have on Rolex, but not make it break it. And recently, my good friend Clive, the rancher, the wrangler, made a video which I thought was extremely sensible, and I, I think that you should have a look at, at the rancher's video, so I will copy and paste uh, the link to that in the description for this video. But in this, uh, the rancher says that the times have changed and that we have to consider, particularly when buying vintage Rolex, that we should buy with box and papers. And I'm here to offer you an, an entirely alternative viewpoint to, uh, to the other two, which is buy it without box and papers without fear versus only buy with, with box and papers. I'm gonna tell you how you can actually recreate box and papers on a Rolex that you own now or that you may buy in the future that is an authentic Rolex, but which comes without box and papers. So let's first have a look at a couple of authentic Rolex watch boxes and papers so we have an idea of what it is that we're looking at and then we're going to discuss the methodology with which you can acquire box and papers for your authentic Rolex. It's very important that you know about this because there are tons of wonderful watches out there that just didn't come with the box and the papers. Okay guys, here you're looking at, the, uh, at an older style Rolex outer box. This one contained um, my Rolex 16613, which is a 1999 watch. It is a two-tone Rolex Submariner known as Bluesy. Oh heck, you know what I forgot guys? I forgot the quick wristwatch check. Let's do that right now. I'm wearing the James Cameron DSSD JC Deep Blue Edition. And this is the first and now discontinued edition. Prices on this guy have been popping up. Okay. Before we open up this old style uh, Rolex Submariner box and see what kind of swag was inside, let's talk for a quick second about why it is that watches come without box and papers. And I'll tell you, it's very simple. The reason for that is, is that not everybody is a maniac like you and me. Okay, so we are not Rolex's traditional target customer. We are collectors, we are anal, we have OCD. We want the box, the paper, the hang tag. We want the original plastic. Sometimes we don't even wanna take the plastics off. We are not well. The average Rolex customer sets the box aside, loses the paperwork, doesn't care about any of that, and then eventually uh, decides he wants to convert his Rolex back into money in order to pay off his mistress to keep quiet to his wife, and that Rolex goes to a pawn shop without box and papers and eventually winds itself up on the gray market, and there you are. It's a beautiful piece. Let's say it's a, uh, let's say it's a two-tone bluesy, or let's say it's a, um, a Rolex two-line no-date Submariner without box and papers, but it's authentic. Should you buy it? Okay, well, we're gonna talk about that, but first, let's look at my 1999 Submariner box. So this is the old style cardboard box, had all kinds of, um, had all kinds of, uh, you know, like sub Submariner, Submarine kind of, you know, decor to it. Inside is the, the fake leather box, or maybe it's real leather. Kind of smells like real leather. Okay, so I'm gonna say it's real leather, has the, the embossed Rolex in, insignia right there has uh, some gold writing on the bottom with the insignia again. Okay, when you opened it up, ooh, there was stuff in there. So this is a real leather pillow, and it has a little pocket, which I'll show you what would have gone in the pocket. It has a leather chamois. This is actual, you know, like leather chamois, chamois for clean and polish, way better than microfiber. This is actual animal skin. Let me sniff it. Yeah, that's animal skin, probably deer. And then um, the hang tags. Now remember my watch, which I'll, I'll throw a picture right after this little segment, I'll throw a picture of that 16613 up there. Uh, my watch, it's a 1999, so it's like a 20 year old watch now practically. And so it was very nice that it came with box and papers and I have all these little bits and pieces. And that adds quite a bit to the value of this watch. But what if I didn't have box and papers? Well, before we go any further, let's have a little quick look at the 16613 two-tone bluesy Submariner. You can see it's quite a pretty watch. Um, this one is from 1999 and you've seen all the swag and goodies that it came with. So I'm really lucky to have full set on this, but what if I didn't? What could we do about that? 
how could I recreate them? And that is what we're gonna talk about in this video. But there's all kinds of stuff that used to come in a Rolex box back in those days. So let's have a look. Swag, okay, so look, I've got the original Rolex uh, wallet that came with. This is really nice to have. This is in virgin condition and I don't intend to break its cherry. I'm just gonna keep it like new. Oh, the only thing I don't have is it used to come this model came with a little silver anchor, but you could buy those for about 30 bucks on eBay. Here's just a quick look at an eBay listing of this anchor, and it shows that you can still get these guys. I think it's nice to have complete set, but I could sacrifice the anchor, but you can get one if you want it. Um, here is the little Rolex Submariner booklet, in case you don't know how to wind a watch. Here is your factory service booklet. And then this, this, believe it or not, when we are talking about box and papers, well, you saw the box. It's the outer box and the inner box. This flimsy little piece of paper. Oh, no, this isn't it. This is literally how to wind and set your watch. Sorry. This little flimsy piece of paper here is actually what we call the paper. Okay. So of all the paper, and yeah, you could probably, you know, look at the serial number of my watch. I don't really care. Um, but this is the paper. So if you have the paper you could even go on ebay and buy an authentic rolex box outer end or inner and those are for sale on ebay all the time this is the thing that you really in in in, in reality cannot recreate okay because it has the date time and place of its original purchase and it has the model number of the of the watch this is the 16613 and it has the serial number of that particular watch and the serial number depending on what kind of rolex it is depends on what location that serial number is engraved on that Rolex, but it's engraved on that Rolex someplace, okay? So this is the thing that you really are looking for, because the box, hey, you could buy one on eBay, but the paper, that's what everybody wants. Why do we want the paper? I think we want it because it makes it a complete set, box and papers, and what that means is, is that we just feel better knowing that we got something that's authentic and that we can sell with relative ease, because a Rolex with box and papers sells for more money and much easier uh, than if you don't have box and papers. And, I, and again, it's authentic. That's really, really critical. Okay, well, that's the old stuff. Let me show you a new one. This is a newer uh, Rolex box. You can see this outer box has still cardboard, but it's got the, uh, the crown emblazoned upon it in, uh, in embossed relief. This is a big, heavy box. The reason is, is that this contained uh, the, this deep sea sea dweller James Cameron that you're looking at right here. So um, we got a lot fancier on the on the leather or pleather box that got a lot fancier. We got the wave water pattern that is really gorgeous. Um, but still, you know what? It's not like wood as though it were uh, like a Patek Philippe. So okay, now when we open this guy up, it is not quite as fancy as we used to have. But now we've got a place you know, for the, for the paperwork, okay? There's booklets, and here is the, the, the warranty card with the, with the model, and I'm giving you the finger, with the model and the serial number here, okay? So um, in some senses, it's a little fancier. I've saved the bezel protector, the hang tags. So if and when I ever want to sell this watch, I will be able to sell it as a complete set, and um, certainly that will have greater value to a collector than otherwise. Okay. So that's what we really want when we buy a Rolex complete set with box and papers. But what do you do if you want to buy a watch, a Rolex, that you know or hope to be authentic and you are ready to go ahead and recreate box and papers where there are none? What do you do? Let's talk about that right now. To get what will pass for new paperwork on your Rolex, take it to an authorized dealer who will get you an estimate from the authorized Rolex service center for doing a full service on that watch. Now, if I were you, I wouldn't get my watch polished. I wouldn't get the bracelet polished. Also, if you have a watch which is tritium and it has a vintage patina dial, make sure you tell the service center via your authorized dealer that you will absolutely refuse to have them touch the dial or hands. Now, chances are they may not want to do that service if you won't permit that. However, they will send you back an estimate for the work, including everything they want to do. And if you refuse to let them touch the hands or dial as an example, then they may simply refuse to do the work on the watch, but they will have authenticated it for you because they will be giving you paperwork with the model number and the serial number of your watch. And that is direct from Rolex with the Rolex logo and address on there.
Now what you're looking at here is the full kit that came back from the Rolex, Rolex service center on a two line no date sub that is a 16040M. And look at, look at everything that you get. You get a warranty card, you get a, uh, some sort of a hang tag, you have a letter of authentication, which includes the model and critically the serial number of that watch. You get a travel shipping pouch. And of course you get back a fully serviced watch. Now that is assuming you've done the service. This one was serviced without polish, just as we would want done on a vintage watch like this, and the entire fee was $700. But remember, you don't actually have to get the service done to get some of that paperwork back from Rolex. Now, should you get the service done? Hey, listen, absolutely, on a watch like this, because they didn't need to replace anything, the, the hands didn't have tritium falling off of it and so forth. Therefore, you know, you've got a 20 year old watch, which for $700 is now not only serviced and good for years of pleasure, but it's also now comes with essentially what will easily pass for box and papers for any serious collector. So that is $700 really well spent. Here you're getting a look at, it's not really a hang tag. It's just a reminder that you got to manually wind your automatic watch after a service like this. And uh, more important, let's take a look at this warranty card. This card looks very similar to those original warranty cards that come with more modern Rolexes. They feature, uh, in this case, the date of service, the model number of the watch. Earlier I misstated the model. It is a 14060M, and it has the serial number of the watch. Now that's really critical because that serial number is engraved right on this Rolex from the factory on the day it was made. And so this is really um, uh, helps to authenticate the watch, this warranty card. So between that and the shipping pouch that it comes with, you have really got yourself something that is very close to uh, the value of original box and papers. And in fact, to a collector, this would do it. If, if I were looking to buy a watch like this and it came with no box and papers, I would not pay as much as I would with, uh, with this material here. Here you're looking at the back of that warranty card. And here's the little shipping box that it comes back in. The watch will come on a pillow nestled into this uh, box. It's cardboard with felt, um, but I think the really critical thing is that it's from the factory service center and it has the Rolex logo on it. Not quite as nice as the original box in which it would have been packed, but this is a factory service center box, so it's definitely worth having if you have nothing else or go buy on eBay. You also get this uh, nifty travel pouch. Um, I can't actually tell you that it's suede. It could be um, pleather or made in a chemical factory. But again, the important thing is, is that this is a Rolex factory service original pouch. And it says that right on the, um, right on the pouch. And this is like actually a collectible item right here. So, and you now have box and papers and pouch. And you're now authenticated and serviced and box and paper watch will be sent back to you in, a, in an outer shipping box that looks like this. Every scrap of this is collectible and savable. You got box and papers, dude. And here is a quick look at the 14060M. It is a really pretty watch. This is the watch in question. It has been serviced, but it has not been polished. I really recommend that you avoid when you're servicing your watch, avoid polishing the case or the bracelet because collectors like original quality and what we really wanna see is uh, if it's got wear and tear on it, that's better than the, the lugs losing their lines, the bracelet losing the sharpness and the edge by being over polished. So you're, you're way better off in original condition. Okay, so we got a couple, uh, a couple of quick points as a, as a matter of review. First, what I'm not recommending is that you take a vintage Rolex with a patina dial, with patina hands, send that into the service center with no instructions to get it serviced and authenticated and get all your box and paperwork. Because if you do that, they will take off the dial and give you a service dial, same with the hands. They will not give you back your old parts and you will actually screw the value of your watch because Rolex wants it to look new, but you want it to be the antique that it really is, okay? So if you have such a watch, um, and you'd like to get box and paper sort of reassembled for it, then what you do is you send it to the service center, as I said, with instructions on what you will and won't let them do. Then you gotta cross your fingers a little bit and pray that they actually listen to you. But um, hey, you know, they are supposed to do that. And then what you will get back is a watch which comes with a Rolex authentication paper, you know, because 
by that, what I mean is it's going to be a, an estimate of what needs doing along with the refusal to do it your way. It will contain the, the serial number of your watch as well as the reference number of your watch. That's what you really need. I doubt they're going to send you any kind of nifty swag like a travel pouch, but what you really need is the paper. Um, however, if you have a watch that could benefit from service and you don't need to worry about a service dial or hands, on a watch such as uh, the 14060M that we saw here in, in this particular video, then listen, it's a brilliant idea. You're buying a 20 year old watch with no service history on it, no box, no papers. You know what? You should be getting that watch uh, at, a, at a much cheaper price than one that comes with box and papers. Wear it until the thing isn't working right um, and then go do the process that we've just described here. Or if you want to sell it, then go ahead and go through the process, get everything assembled, and you should get m far more value out of it than what you put into it, number one. Number two, you'll have a watch that you can sell much quicker. Thanks to Matt Webb for all the pictures and the assistance in assembling this. What I can tell you is what we've just discussed here, by the way, what we've just discussed is a little bit of a dealer secret. D you know, dealers are constantly, dealers of used watches, are constantly acquiring used Rolex watches they can authenticate them because they know what they're looking at, but they know that their buyers are gonna be all like wild and get a, a hair up their butt about box and papers. So they do the process that I have just described. If you have something really unique, really expensive, let's say a Patek Philippe, well, you can send that off to Patek Philippe and get a letter of authenticity. That will cost you somewhere under $200 and you'll get an actual recertification of that watch. But with Rolex, do the process that I've described. Well, guys, thanks. I hope you like this video. Please like, subscribe, squoosh, smish, smosh, lick the uh, like button, subscribe, etc. And hey, let's do this again soon.